Our moral foundation is being completely eroded. Since 1973, we've, we've murdered 53 million unborn children. Pornography is rampant. We have a major problem with pornography uh, globally, but in the United States, we're, we're some of the worst offenders, and it touches the church even. And a lot of men in particular, but also women, struggle with this issue of pornography. I would like to give you just a, a little bit of encouragement. Get a block on your computer. We use NetNanny. I'm not trying to pr promote any particular one, but that's the one we use. It's on all my computers. My, uh, uh, my wife or uh, Malie, depending on which computer, they have the passwords for those computers. I don't have a particular struggle with that, but I want to model uh, the, that, that lifestyle of setting parameters to protect us. The church at large in the United States is being crippled by pornography, and the simple reason is it's such a temptation. And if men get involved with that, which is it's just so easy to have it happen, what happens is that we become, we become so weakened by that spiritually that we can't lift our head to God, much less in leadership in the church or even with our own families. So it's really important, men in particular, I'm speaking to you, is that you've got to take leadership over this area and get some sort of protection for yourself in terms of a, of, of a, of a web block. You know, if you, if you can't do that, then just throw your computer away. Uh, you've got to do something radical to be able to defend and protect your family. Do not bring that into your home. It's evil. And there's, 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 a, there's evil attached to that when you watch that and view that. Your family might not know, your wife might not know, your kids might not know, but there's a presence that you bring into your home when you invite that kind of evil. And I'm not, I'm not uh, degrading or, or condemning or in any way criticizing anyone. I understand that temptation, and I've done something about it, and I'm encouraging you uh, in your family to do something about it. But it's so bad in our culture right now that the prophets, the revenues exceed all of the revenue of ABC, CBS, and, and, and NBC all put together. And you may be surprised to find out that because it's escalated so radically in the last few years, it's now larger than the revenue of Microsoft, of Google, of Amazon, of eBay, of Yahoo, of Apple, of Netflix, and Earthlink all combined. It's the number one revenue source from Internet. And that's where our culture is. But it's not just these areas that are being shaken. The church itself is being shaken. It's being shaken by these events. It's being shaken by compromise. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, there's a very powerful verse that Peter says prophetically. He says, in the last days, God is going to not only shake the nations, he is going to shake the church. And he says judgment will actually come to the church first before it comes to the nations. He doesn't exactly tell us how he's going to do that. But I believe it's going to be through persecution of some sort. But the really amazing thing is, is that we're in a position right now, because those things have not yet occurred, for us to assess ourselves. That's what we've been learning in Matthew chapter 7. We are to judge. We are to judicially assess our own lives and even the lives of other believers, but with a, with a heart to edify and encourage and strengthen and build up, never condemning. We're not to judge and assess the unbelieving world because they don't share our standards. They don't share the citizenry in the kingdom of God, and they don't share our king. But we are to judge, and one of the things that the Bible says is Paul encourages us, judge yourselves. And so I want to judge myself before Christ judges me. I want to take a look at myself based on the word of God and come to the Bible every day and say, Lord, is this for me? Am I that man? Not, you know, somebody else needs to hear this message. I can't wait to give this message to the church because they need to hear it. Honestly, I need everything I say up here more than you do. But I preach it because it's the privilege that I have before Christ, and it's an honor to be able to deliver the Word of God. But the Bible says that we should assess ourselves because a time of judgment for the church is coming, and that judgment, 1 Peter 4.17, will begin with the family of God.